Welcome, welcome to our service this morning. Uh, we are celebrating communion this Sunday for the baptism of Christ. Uh, we're going to hear the story from the Gospel of Mark of uh, Christ's baptism by John in the River Jordan. And I'm going to be talking to you about that sense of revelation, of manifestation in this, this epiphany tide and our relationship with God. So just pause for a couple of moments and then we will begin. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. The Lord be with you and also with you. So we have our prayer of preparation. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So our first hymn this morning is The Sinless One Came to Jordan. Uh, so do join in or just uh, reflect on the music and the words as you hear them. So our collect for today. Heavenly Father, at the Jordan you revealed Jesus as your Son. May we recognise him as our Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. 
and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We are in the season of epiphany, a season of manifestation, of revelation, of realisation. Jesus has been born into the world. God come to earth as one of us, to be with us, Emmanuel. At the feast of the epiphany, we have the arrival of the Magi highlighting how this vulnerable baby, born in such humble circumstances, is actually the Christ child, born for all people and all nations. A beacon of light and hope for all that see him. A new relationship with God, a new beginning with God. Christmas is not an end of a year celebration. It is the opening act of the story of a lifetime. The story of Jesus, the story of you. And today that message grows as we hear the story of Jesus's baptism. A story of new relationship, a new covenant with God. And to begin that story, we do need to quickly look back at the arrival of the Magi and the gifts that they brought. We know so little about them. We don't know where they came from. We don't exactly know who they were. We don't even know their proper titles. The Bible gives us, in different translations, a variety of answers. We don't know how many of them there are. But what we do know is what they gave to the baby Jesus. We know that they gave him gold, frankincense and myrrh. Gold to represent Jesus's kingship on earth, recognising his presence and his power. Essentially acclaiming him and saying, you are our king. You are this Messiah figure among us, even though at that point he was just a very young child in very ordinary circumstances. Frankincense, an incense used in worship, pointing therefore to the deity of Jesus, of recognising his position in the kingdom of heaven as king not just on earth but also in heaven. And then thirdly, the myrrh, an ingredient commonly used in the embalming of the dead recognising in Jesus his life and death on earth, that he is not just with us as God with us, but with us as a human being, just like us, fully God and fully man, that he will live and die as one of us. And of course, as we know from the cross, ultimately defeating that death, and bring us, bringing us everlasting life. And so Jesus, even in those earliest of days of his life on earth, is recognised 
as a king on earth and in heaven. New life, new hope, new beginnings, new relationship. And as we turn our attention to the baptism of Christ today, we have some powerful parallels to that visit from the Magi. There is also the recognition of his earthly presence. John is baptising people in the Jordan. And here he baptises Jesus too. He recognises that Jesus is greater than he. And yet there is that mutual unity, that coming together in relationship of saying, even so, Jesus stoops to be baptised. Why? Why does Jesus need to be baptised if he is God? Well, it's about saying, actually, as you are baptising into my kingdom, so I am coming into yours. It is a unity. It is a power. It is a new relationship. Then there is the recognition of his heavenly presence and power. John proclaiming that he baptises with water, but that Jesus baptises with the Holy Spirit. Again, that unity of those two great realms, of heaven coming to earth, earth to heaven. And then ultimately, we have that recognition of Jesus' life and death and life to come. Verse 10 of the Gospel, And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart, and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. This is that myrrh moment. The heavens being torn apart is as a divide between the heaven and earth being destroyed. It is the proclamation of a new unity with the kingdom of heaven a new beginning and a new hope. In one verse, Mark has drawn an allusion to Jesus' death on the cross and the defeat of death, with the tearing of the temple curtain that occurs in that moment, itself symbolic of the divide between heaven and earth. And here we also have this tearing apart of that same divide. And then the new hope shown by the dove descending upon Jesus of God saying, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. It is a new beginning and reminds us perhaps of the dove alighting on the new land after the great flood. Again, then also a new beginning and a new relationship. And so as the dove settles on the new ground in the new on the new ground of the new covenant in the Old Testament, so the dove settles on the ground of the new covenant in the New Testament. On Jesus. Jesus is our relationship with God. And so what does this mean for us now? Well, it means as we go through this epiphany tide, as we embark on this new year, we say to ourselves, this doesn't just all end at the nativity scene. It's not Jesus is just now with us and that's that. It's about new relationship, new beginnings of allowing that the space, the nourishment and the nurturing to grow. Of looking for those new shoots of life. Of saying, in Jesus, there is my hope, my life, my growth, my future. That it is an ongoing thing. A new covenant for all of us. For you. For humanity. Amen. I saw water flowing from the threshold of the temple. Wherever the river flows, everything will spring to life. Alleluia. On the banks of the river grow trees bearing every kind of fruit. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail. Their fruit will serve for food, their leaves for the healing of the nations. 
for the river of the water of life flows from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Let us pray. God of truth, you are faithful to the covenant you have made with us. Look in mercy on your people. From all our sins, O Lord, wash us and we shall be clean. We have broken the pledges of our baptism and failed to be your disciples. From all our sins, O Lord, wash us and we shall be clean. Though we are saved by Christ and dead to sin through the deep waters of death, we have not witnessed to his grace by our manner of life. From all our sins, O Lord, wash us and we shall be clean. We have shown indifference to those in need and have been afraid to stand up for justice and truth. From all our sins, O Lord, wash us and we shall be clean. We have been slow to forgive and failed to remember your repeated forgiveness of sins. From all our sins, O Lord, wash us and we shall be clean. Today we rejoice and give thanks because your son humbled himself to be baptised in the Jordan. Through the waters you have given us the mystery of baptism for the remission of our sins. From all our sins, O Lord, wash us and we shall be clean. Through water and spirit you give us new life as the people of God and pour out upon us the gifts of your new covenant. From all our sins, O Lord, wash us and we shall be clean. Almighty God, in our baptism you have consecrated us to the temples of your Holy Spirit. May we, who you have counted worthy, nurture your indwelling spirit with a lively faith and worship you with upright love. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. We come now to our communion. The response in the Eucharistic prayer is, this is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. You celebrated your new gift of baptism in signs and wonders at the Jordan. Your voice was heard from heaven to awaken faith in the presence among us of your word made flesh. Your spirit was seen as a dove revealing Jesus as your servant and anointing him with the oil of gladness to preach the good news to the poor. Therefore, as we celebrate the union of earth and heaven, we rejoice to echo the song of the angels in heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs and faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night that he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, 
gave thanks and broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, this is my blood shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened hearts and opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And so we pray together with confidence the prayer our Saviour Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. So now we have uh, 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 some time of meditation uh, for your own prayers and reflections and to be in communion in spirit with all partaking. And as we do so, we hear uh, the song Veni Sanctus Spiritus, Come Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord of all time and eternity, you opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father in the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, we sing now our next hymn source and fount of all creation.
and so the blessing. God the Father who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. God the Son who turned water into wine at the wedding feast, transform your lives and make glad your hearts. God the Holy Spirit who came upon the beloved Son at his baptism in the River Jordan, pour out his gifts upon you who have come to the waters of new birth. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you all and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.